Welcome to the Chomp Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We've made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. If you wish to follow along step-by-step, -step, you will need to first download the Chomp Man project files both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. In this video, we'll show you how to set up the player character for the Chomp Man game. For this project, instead of root motion or animations to drive the character movement, we'll be using a combination of blend shapes, FSMs, and triggers to cue our character's animation. For the first part of our video, we'll set up a state machine that can make our character automatically blink. This is an FSM that we recommend you save and use not only for this character in game, but for characters in any other game you develop. And while not 100% necessary for our game to function, small nuances such as this can easily help bring a character and game to life when viewed by the player. Something you may notice about both our Chomp and Ghost characters is that they didn't natively come with any animations. Instead, they contain blend shapes. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what blend shapes are, blend shapes are used in 3D to interpolate between different sets of geometry. Blend shapes are most often used in facial animation to transition between expressions or to make a character speak during dialogue. That said, since we'll be making a prefab of our character, we don't need to add our character to our level 01 scene just yet. So open a blank scene and drag the Chomp character into the hierarchy. The Chomp character can be found in the Mesh folder under the Character subfolder. With our character selected, if we go into our skin mesh and click Blend Shapes, we can see that we have two blend shapes, one for our blink and one for our mouth opening and closing. First, select the character and in the Playmaker Editor, right-click Add FSM, or in the Inspector, click Add Component and find and add Playmaker FSM. For those of you new to Playmaker, to bring up the Playmaker Editor and Action Browser, click the Playmaker dropdown at the top of your Unity Editor and click Playmaker Editor. The Playmaker Action Browser can subsequently be found in the Playmaker dropdown under Editor window. In the Playmaker Action Browser, if we type or search for blend shapes, you may be disappointed to find that there aren't any actions for blend shapes in Playmaker. Additionally, if we drag our skin mesh into the Playmaker and simply try to manipulate our blend shapes through setting our skin mesh component properties, you'll find that there is no property that can easily access our blend shapes. With that said, Playmaker has many additional actions that can be downloaded and added to your project at any time. Downloading additional actions can be done in one of two ways. The first, and perhaps easiest way, is by clicking the Download Add-ons, which is in the Playmaker dropdown. This will take us to the Download section of the Playmaker website. From there, we can click and download the Ecosystem Browser. The Ecosystem Browser will allow us to search and download additional Playmaker actions with the Unity Editor, as well as automatically add or remove them from our project. The second way is to search the Playmaker webpage and forums and download the Playmaker action packages one by one. For sake of efficiency and simplicity, we'll simply download and import the ecosystem browser to get any additional actions we may need during this project. Additionally, the ecosystem browser 
We'll also make sure we have the most up-to-date version of the actions we're adding to Playmaker. Once the import is complete, click the Playmaker dropdown. Under Add-ons, you should now see the Ecosystem Browser. With our Ecosystem Browser up, type and search Blend Shapes. You should now see all the Playmaker actions associated with Blend Shapes. By clicking the Get button, Unity will automatically download and import the actions into our project. Once you've downloaded all the Playmaker Blend Shape actions, close the Action Browser and go back to the Playmaker Editor. Select the Chop character to display the character's FSM inside the Playmaker Editor. If we now type Blend Shapes in the Action Browser, we can now see we have a new Blend Shape tab or section with Playmaker Blend Shape actions we can now use for our project. Click and add the Set Blend Shape Weight action. With the action now added to the FSM, you should now see a red warning message. This warning message is simply Playmaker telling us that our game object doesn't have a skin mesh component that can contain blend shapes. Since we created our FSM on the parent chomp game object, we'll need to first add and set the child game object, which contains our blend shapes. In order to do this, we'll select Use a specified game object. Then we'll drag our chomp game object into the empty game slot. At this point, we need to specify a blend shape through the shape index. The shape index is an array, and like any array, starts with zero, and from there goes to one, two, three, four, five, and so forth, depending on the amount of objects in the array. That said, since our blink is the first blend shape in the array, the index is zero. Next, we'll need to create events. Click the Event tab and at the bottom, type and create two events, one called Waiting and another event called Blinking. Right-click in the Playmaker Editor and under Global Transitions, select and add the Waiting event and the Blinking event. Cut the set blend shape wait action from the start event state and paste it into the blinking event state. With the waiting event state selected, add a wait action. Inside the wait action, set the finish event to blinking. Click the button to the right of the time input box and in the new dropdown, click new variable. Name the variable blink wait time and hit Create or Enter. Click the Variable tab in the Playmaker Editor. With the Blink Wait Time variable selected, click the Inspector checkbox at the bottom of the Variable tab, which will make the variable available to view and change from the Unity Inspector. Create another float variable called Blink Speed by first picking the variable type in the Variable Type dropdown then typing its name in the input box at the beginning of the variable tab. Select the new blink speed variable and make it available in the inspector. If we go back to the Unity editor, in the inspector, rename the FSM to blink FSM. Minimize the dropdown beside the name, then click controls to reveal the controls dropdown. You should now see that we have our two variables, blink speed and blink wait time. Before we continue, let's first break down the fundamental logic we'll need to put in place for our character to automatically blink. We want to use our blink wait float to tell Unity to wait a certain amount of seconds between each time our character can blink again, and for our blink, we want to use the blink speed to set the speed and value of our blink blend shape. To begin, in the blinking event state on the set blend shape wait action, Create a new variable for wait and name it blink wait. Essentially, the logic we want to have in the blinking state is that every frame, the blink wait increases 
and once the blink weight hits a certain number, it transitions to the waiting state where the blink weights then set back to zero, waits a certain amount of seconds, then goes back to the blinking event state again. To do this, we first need to add a float add and float compare action. We'll first start with our float add. We want our float add to add a certain amount to our blink weight variable every frame. So set the blink weight as the top variable in the float add action. Then click the every frame checkbox. For our added value, we'll start with 10 and gauge how fast that makes our character blink. Next, add a float compare action. Drag the action to the bottom so that it is the last action to occur in our state. We also want this comparison to happen every frame. Otherwise, it will simply run only once at the very start of our blinking state event. Set the first float to use the blink weight variable and set the second float to be 100. Then set the equals event to waiting. With that complete, click the waiting event state and add a float set action. Move the action to the top, then set the variable to blink weight and set the value to zero. Next, copy the set blend shape weight from the blinking state into the waiting state. Paste it below the set float and uncheck the every frame checkbox. On the start event state, hold control and left click to add a finish event. With the start event selected, left click and hold to create a transition line and drag it to the waiting event state. Since we already created a variable for our blink speed, let's use the blink speed to find the correct value to add to our blink weight. In Playmaker, in the blinking event state, place blink speed in the add value of the float add. In the Unity Inspector, set the blink speed value to 10 and the blink wait time as 2. Next, hit play to test the blink FSM. At this point, we can see our blink is fully functional, but it also appears some of our values still need to be tweaked. Since we enabled our variables in the inspector, we can tweak our values in real time without leaving play mode. Once we're done testing our values, let's leave play mode and go back to the Playmaker editor. In order to allow our character to quickly open his eyes, opposed to them snapping open, we can duplicate and slightly alter the blinking close state. Select the blink event state and copy and paste it so it creates a new state. Right click on the blink event of the newly created state and select delete transition. Control left click on the state to create a finished event. Next, add a float subtract action to the new state. Change the float variable to blend weight and the value to blend speed. Then duplicate the float subtract action. Next, change the float to of the float compare action from 100 to zero. Remove the equal event and change the less than event to finished. Then right click the state and add the waiting global events. Remove the waiting event from state 2, then use a transition line to connect the finish event from the new waiting state to state 2. Next, remove the finish event from the start event state. You can do this by right clicking the state and then select Delete Transition. With the start event state selected, add a send event. In the send event, select blinking from the dropdown. Send events are an easy and clean way to transition between states. They can also be used to activate states on other FSMs. Since we're setting our value in our new waiting state, we can remove the set float and set blend shape actions from state two. In order to create a brief pause once the eyes are closed during the blink, 
set the transition to greater than, then place 200 in the comparison value. Make sure you check the every frame checkbox for both the subtract float actions. Next, go into the Unity Editor and press play to test your Blink FSM state machine. In our opinion, a blink speed of 50 and blink weight of 3 seconds gives exactly the look we're going for. However, feel free to use the values that look best for you. Before we continue setting up our character for our game, let's first make the character a prefab. Before doing so, make sure your position and rotation transforms are set to zero. Next, drag the chomp character into your character subfolder inside the prefab folder. If you don't have a character folder, right click anywhere in the prefab folder in the project window and create a new folder and name it characters. With the prefab of our character created, let's finish our chomp character setup. First, we need to set a tag for our character prefab. To do that, select the chomp character prefab. With your character selected at the top left part of the inspector inside the dropdown, select player. Player is a default tag which is included in Unity, but in the next lesson, We'll go over how to create your own custom tags for those that are unfamiliar with the process. Next, drag the chomp character prefab into your empty scene. Since we don't have any animations that we're going to be using in this game, Let's remove the animator component. In place of the animator component, we're going to add a default Unity character controller. Click Add Component and type Character Controller, or under Physics, you can also find the Character Controller component. With our Character Controller now added, the first thing we need to do is adjust the height and shape of the controller. To do this, change the height to 1. Next, change the radius and the center Y axis to 0.6. For our final step, add a sphere collider. Since our character controller acts as both a collision and physics object, we'll use this additional collider as a trigger. Expand the sphere collider's component menu inside the inspector. Just like in our character collider, make the center Y axis 0.6. Since we want our trigger collider to be slightly larger than our character controller, make the radius 0.65. And for the final step, click the Is Trigger checkbox. Once this is complete, hit Apply. However, for those of you that are using a version of Unity that supports nested prefabs, the process is pretty much the same. The main difference being, we don't need to drag our character into an empty scene. Instead, we can simply click Open Prefab. That completes our player character setup. In the next video, we'll set up our enemy characters, creating a dynamic floating effect and a FSM that allows them to glow and dynamically change colors with a single material. So be sure to join us in our next lesson.